Welcome to this episode of the Chem OG. Today we're going to take a look at induction. Induction in chemistry refers to the influence that substituents in any nearby atoms can have on the reactivity of a molecule. And sometimes that's called the inductive effect. And the idea is the following, is that charged species are inherently unstable. Anytime you got a positive charge, it attracts a negative, and the negative attracts a positive. But neutral things, on the other hand, neutral species are a lot more stable. And so the idea behind taking a look at what effect these substituents are going to have is that neighboring substituents can be stabilizers if they help a molecule get closer to neutrality, or they can be destabilizers if they drift the molecule away from neutrality instead. And so what we want to take a look at are what kind of substituents do we have? And as a result, we can be able to determine what kind of effect they're going to make on our molecule. And so uh, the two ways in which we can alter the stability of a molecule is that there are two types of substituents, ones that we call electron withdrawing and other ones that we call electron donating. So electron withdrawing substituents, the withdrawing or donating aspect is always relative to carbon when we're talking about organic molecules. And so if we attach something to that carbon that takes away electron density from that carbon, we say it's electron withdrawing. And so examples of electron withdrawing substituents are things like the nitro group. And uh, the reason that this is electron withdrawing is because the nitrogen actually has a positive charge on it. So that's something we'll take a look at in a second. Aldehydes are electron withdrawing. The halogens in general are more electronegative than carbon, so they are electron withdrawing as well. And so if we have something that's electron withdrawing, that's going to help to stabilize any negative charge. And the reason for that is because they take away electron density and because by definition, if something has a negative charge, it means it has excess electron density. Having an electron withdrawing substituent to take some of that electron density away is a stabilizing factor. On the other hand, though, if we have something with a positive charge, that means it's electron deficient. And so if I take away electron density from something that's already electron deficient, I deviate it even more from neutrality. So essentially that positive charge is kind of like someone owing money to somebody else, right? It's like, hey, I'm already short on cash. And then somebody else and, you know, comes in and takes even more money away. So that gets that person even more in debt. So having a positive charge is already a bad situation in terms of electron deficiency. Having an electron withdrawing substituent uh, would make things worse. But you know what would make things better for a positive charge is if that positive charge were able to get more electron density instead. And that's what electron donating substituents do. Electron donating substituents are going to have the opposite effect of electron withdrawing substituents because instead of taking electron density away, they're giving electron density back. And so examples of electron donating substituents are going to be things that contain carbon and hydrogen. Uh, so those are what we call alkyl groups. And uh, alkali metals, alkali metals are less electronegative than carbon. And so if you attach an alkali metal like a magnesium or, um, or a lithium to, uh, to carbon, what that does, it gives electron density back to that carbon. And the effect is an electron donating effect. So if you already have a negative charge, even more electron density is bad. Because again, the idea is to get closer to neutral. Uh, moderation is always great excess of anything is bad. So destabilizing negative charge uh, is what electron donating substituents are going to do, and they're going to stabilize positive charge instead. So if you compare both the electron withdrawing and the electron donating substituents, they can be stabilizers or they can be destabilizers. It just depends on the context. Now, uh, a few notes here. One is that hydrogen is neither donating or withdrawing. If we attach a hydrogen to a carbon, really doesn't do much in terms of helping to uh, you know, make the positive charges or negative charges any better. Um, phenyl substituents, on the other hand, they can be uh, stabilizers in both situations, interestingly. And, and that's because a phenyl ring provides you know, a good amount of resonance, and resonance can stabilize both positive and negative charge. So what we want to do next is we want to take a look at examples of molecules and how it is that induction can help to stabilize concrete examples of compounds. And so remember that substituents can help to stabilize or destabilize something. And in particular, the application that we're going to take a look at is in terms of acidity. And so if I take a look at these two molecules, I have phenol on the right and I have nitrophenol on the left, specifically P-nitrophenol. And so 
these molecules are acids, and the reason that they're acids is because they can lose the hydrogen atom that's up top here. So I can lose this hydrogen atom, or I can lose that hydrogen atom. And when I lose that hydrogen, I lose it as an H+, which means that it's not giving up, uh, it's not going away with any of its electrons. It actually is going away without any electrons. And so what ends up happening is that after the the H plus goes away, I end up with a negative charge on each of these oxygens. And the question is, how well can each of these oxygen atoms stabilize that negative charge? So by having a, a nitro group attached to my molecule, what that can do is that positive charge on the nitrogen can definitely help to stabilize the negative charge that results on that oxygen atom. And so through a combination of resonance and the inductive effect that we just talked about, uh, that positive charge on the nitrogen can help to stabilize the negative charge that results on that conjugate base. And that actually makes this molecule a little bit more likely to lose an H plus than uh, this molecule. And so the result is that the inductive effect actually has a pretty profound effect here in the sense that P nitrophenol is actually about a thousand times more acidic than phenol. And that's just because of the electron withdrawing effect of the, nit the nitro group and how it's able to stabilize that negative charge on the oxygen. So let's take a look at another uh, pretty decent type of acid, and that is a carboxylic acid. And so if you're a little bit more of a visual person um, and that whole process of taking away the, the, the H plus and putting a negative charge on the oxygen and all that stuff, let's see exactly how that looks like. So if I'm taking a look at uh, this acid over here, and this hydrogen is bonded to an oxygen again, kind of like how this hydrogen was bonded to an oxygen, and so when we talk about the acidity of a compound, we're talking about hydrogen leaving without any electrons, right? Because H plus has zero electrons on it. That's the reason that that hydrogen has a plus charge. It's missing an electron. And so what happens is that both of the electrons in this bond are not going to leave with the hydrogen. They're actually going to have to come back on the oxygen like so. So both of these electrons are going to go to the oxygen. And what that results in is, like I said, an oxygen with a negative charge. And so if we take a look at these three molecules over here, these three molecules have different effects in, in, in how it is that they're going to deal with that negative charge that results next door. So remember we said that the hydrogen doesn't really do much, right? So the hydrogen is kind of be, is going to be a little bit midway uh, in my ranking in terms of acidity. Uh, the difference between the two remaining molecules is that this right here is an alkyl group, right? It's got a bunch of carbons and hydrogens. And this right here is a carbon, but it's attached to three different fluorines. Um, and those are very electron withdrawing. And so remember that electron withdrawing substituents really help to stabilize negative charge. Whereas electron donating substituents, they destabilize negative charge. And so taking a proton off of here is the worst idea out of all of them. And that's because these electron donating substituents, they're going to give more electron density to a situation that already has negative charge, and that's pretty bad. Whereas the fluorines are going to stabilize the molecule the most because I have three fluorines, they're very electron withdrawing, and they can really, really help take away the sting of that extra electron density with the negative charge. And so if we are ranking these guys, the uh, trifluorinated acid is going to be the most acidic, whereas the hydrogen or the molecule that contains the hydrogen by itself, the formic acid is uh, midway in the ranking. And the one with the alkyl group, the propanoic acid, that is the one that is going to be um, the weakest acid simply because its conjugate base is the least stable of the bunch. All right. So to summarize here, the inductive effect is one way to help stabilize a molecule. Substituents that take you closer to neutrality are stabilizers. Substituents that take you away from neutrality are destabilizers instead. And so if we're talking about those stabilizing effects uh, overall, remember the mnemonic rays, R-A-I-S-E. The inductive effect is the I, and these are the other stabilizing effects uh, that we can have on our molecules. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you at the next lesson.